Welcome back everybody to Tesla Driver and welcome back to the 2024 Tesla Model 3 Highland version with the full self-driving capability and high fidelity 3D park assist. Now sadly I've only got this car for one day so all of the stuff all of the content I've got to kind of make today uh, and I haven't had a chance really to go out and test the high fidelity 3D parking assist so I thought I would do a little obstacle here in our garden and on our driveway and compare it now and at night time. How well will it do using just the matrix leds on the front the rear view camera at the back and of course the red braking lights which i think as you can see here actually gives off a surprising amount of light i'm really not expecting it to do as well at night time as it as i did in the daytime but let's find out so when you first get in the car, you put your belt on. The car then has this new feature, which again is in beta, and it should be able to determine whether you want to go forwards or backwards so you don't even have to press it. Now, 99.999% of the time, I am not going to want to go forwards here because that will be going straight onto my grass. I'm obviously going to want to go backwards and go onto my gravel. Has the car figured that out? No. Okay, so it's got that wrong instantly, and if I just start accelerating, it starts driving me forward, and now all of a sudden we're on the grass, which isn't right. But we do get to see the high fidelity park assist here. Uh, can you see this little lump here? That's actually my dog who is lying down over there. So the car seems to seems to see the grass change, but down here maybe this is where it thinks i'm going to go which is a little bit strange so what i'm going to do to start off with is we'll put it in reverse you can see that the high fidelity can see that tree in front of us there uh, we've got a bin on the right and on the left here is my garage now there is as you can see here between this uh, fence there is a wall a wall and then a walkway but the car doesn't seem to be showing that walkway just yet let me see if i reverse up backwards and past it does it see yeah okay so so there you go so it's starting to build a slight oh there we go it's actually building it up as we sit here it's building the pathway in between the house and the garage because i guess the camera can see through there now and when that camera's gone past it it just assumes it's a full wall over on the right hand side we've got a gate does it make any difference no it doesn't seem like there's any difference to the gate if we keep on reversing backwards uh, my dog is coming up in front of us and you can kind of see him creeping up there on the high fidelity parking assist it is showing him here as like a little oh actually it showed a dog now it shows a human now it shows a dog now it shows a human um so yeah it's definitely picked him up but it's not a hundred percent sure whether it's just a small man a big dog um yeah it's just showing us a person so on the right here you can see this freelander that freelander has been picked up nicely as well uh, let's keep on going back here and see what else so you can see here this is actually like a dip down that you shouldn't go in and the car has blocked it off there as it's not accessible so that's actually that's actually pretty impressive let's keep on going backwards here it's now showing my rubbish bins as rubbish bins whereas before it was just showing them as kind of lumps and then at the back here, we've got kind of a Harris fencing with some tarpaulin. And the car has picked that up nicely. I don't want to get too close to this trolley. There we go. Let's get as close as we can. The car here has told us to stop. And it thinks we're too close to the trolley. This is how close we actually are to the trolley. And I don't think I would want to go any further back so that's actually worked really well over on the left over that side we've got individual trees and you can see the individual trees showing up there as well that's actually pretty impressive uh, and the dog walking around is it going to show the dog no he's walked off and the cameras don't seem to be picking him up very well okay so we'll continue going forward then and we're going to go in between these silver birches here and see what the car thinks of it all and what it picks up so we are just on some pretty flat grass here to be fair and does the car pick all of this up individually yes it is look at that that is really quite cool so it's picking the trees up individually it lights up stuff as we get close to it that could be that could be danger dangerous to it oh it's telling us to stop oh okay so it picked up something right in front of it there and there is definitely not anything right in front of it i think maybe it's not liking the slight elevation of the grass yeah i think 
Yeah, it is. It is. It's definitely the grass that's causing it some troubles. Uh, okay, so over here on the left, does it show? I'm kind of intrigued to see kind of how how defined it can be. Yeah, so it, it just doesn't like... My car, I've driven on this on the grass before, and um, obviously it has no issues. This is actually just saying that the grass in front is apparently an issue, but there is definitely nothing in front of us. So we're going to do the same test here. We're going to tap to activate drive, and by the sounds of that, it's going to want us to go forward, which is just really bizarre because uh, the driveway is clearly at the back here. That's clearly a tree, and that's clearly grass. So I'm not sure why it's so obsessed with that. Let me undo my belt and try one more time. Sorry, it's first thing in the morning. I've got a little bit of a cold. Tap to activate. Yeah, it wants to go forward again, which is um, really strange. Park assist is degraded. Distance estimations may be inaccurate. Okay, that's not what you want to hear straight off the rip. So it still picked up the rubbish bin here on the right-hand side. Uh, let's reverse a little bit and see. So actually, yeah, I need to put it into reverse. It wasn't going to. Let's see if we can get it to do the little gap between the house and the garage at night. Will it be able to do it, do we think? So we're looking for a gap to form. No, so this time, oh, a little bit. So there you go. You can kind of see the gap coming across there. It's trying to build out the little alleyway. Let's re keep reversing backwards. So here you can see the, the Land Rover there. The car has picked that up and has built that up nicely. We're going to keep on going back. So this is what I'm a little bit concerned about is uh, the... The little trolley that's kind of pointing out how well will it pick it up again it's picked up the little ditch bit over there now this is interesting so i think obviously where it goes darker it thinks that it shouldn't go and you could see here this was actually all the way over here now that i've given it a little bit more time the car's kind of fed in the data and filled in the space that it can actually go down that area so yeah see it keeps on encroaching on us which is a little bit strange so it's not warning us yet still not warning us it has picked it up obviously on the camera oh that is really really close that is close but it, it's done it correctly i wouldn't want to get any more close to it so that still worked fine let's put it into drive i'm going to go over to the the left a little bit and see see it's not picked up any of the trees which is strange last time it was picking up the trees on the left it now isn't picking up any of the trees so i'm just going to start reversing very slightly over here to these trees and then maybe with a bit more light yeah so with a bit more light you can see that now it's putting the trees individually in so i guess it's really using the rear view uh light there the rear view led to fill in that space and then here if we go to this little pile of sand yeah okay the car's still asking us to stop before we get to the pile of sand that's actually worked really well okay let's do the real test then and go over onto the grass now obviously it didn't like the grass before so I'm expecting it not to like the grass again. Let's bring the camera back up. So yeah, again, picking up the car, absolutely fine. Let's uh, see if it will do the gates, shall we? Where's my gate button? Oh. Okay, so the gates are opening. Is the car picking up the gates opening? Yeah, it's picked up that one. You can see it nice and clearly. And now it's left a nice gap for us to go into. Let's see if it's okay with the change of floor and the change of height. Yeah, look at that. It's picked up exactly where to go. Interestingly enough, it's not put all the cones in place, which I kind of expected it to put all the cones in place. So that was pretty good. So the gate works fine. That's a little bit worrying there that it's kind of got a little extra bit around the back of the gate. But again, it didn't ping us saying we can't do it. So that's pretty good. That's pretty successful. And then if I just shut the gate again, I wonder if it gets more fidelity when I put it in the, the way it should be going. So yeah, it, it's not as clear, not as clean as it was when we did that in the daytime, but you can clearly see it knows where the gate is. It's moving the gate. It can see the bin and then it seems to put another bin there as well sometimes it pulls in the the kind of pre-done renders for things and then sometimes it doesn't like now so 
Okay, here we go. The big test going onto the grass. You can see there it's picking up the tree and it's actually drawing the tree really quite nicely. Look at that. It's got the, the exact look of that tree, which is really quite cool. Now, I believe I can also put on high beams. How do I turn them on full time? Hold them like that. Okay, I'm not sure how to get my full beams on all the time. Uh, oh, okay, interesting. Look at that. So the tree really has... Oh, actually, it's come back now. It really disappeared for a split second then when there was no light on it. So we're going to drive in between these trees here. The car's not bugging us, to be fair, about the grass. And actually, it's, it's picking these up really well. So yeah, that left tree... Oh, it's almost disappearing. This tree here... It's telling us to stop now. So this tree here was almost disappearing as we went through and the light disappears from that particular object. Because I'm assuming that's all it's using. It has to use light to... Um, wonder if... Can I turn off all the lights? How do I do that? Let's go on to here. That flashes. Let's turn lights off. Okay, so now it's just using the like daytime running lights... And will it pick up stuff with the daytime running lights? Like this tree right in front of us. Oh, it is. Oh, look at that. So it has warned us. It's warned us early. So it says we're right next to it, but we're definitely not. So what happens now if I continue driving into this tree? The car thinks the tree is right there. Yeah, so it, it kind of just keeps on building it as it goes so you definitely need the light for this to work without the light that's definitely the biggest issue reversing up to this tree yeah okay so it's definitely over it gives it a little bit more slack compared to what the um compared to what the ultrasonic sensors would do and again that tree there has kind of disappeared because there's no lights really does need the light and to be fair when you're going to use this <laughs> okay it doesn't like it now you're probably only going to really use this in the parking lot anyway and those are probably going to be um those are probably going to be lit up so just going to try and reverse now at that tree and see how well it picks it up yeah we're using the reverse lights look at that it's picked it up really nicely and from a relatively far distance yeah that's worked really well so Basically, what I'm saying from this is don't drive around without your lights on if you're going to use the park assist. So this is an empty car park here at night. The lights are all off, except we've got this one light beam here on the right. Let's see how well then it picks up here. So we've got road markings. We've got some really, really worn out disabled spaces here on the right. Now, obviously, sadly, the car still can't park itself. It's annoying, I know, but for some reason, Tesla Vision, that's just, just what it is at the moment. It just won't park itself. So let's turn on the new updated system and have a look around so it really does actually show you the lines in terms of how faded they are in real life the one on the right is definitely the better line you can see here that these lines are really really faded out let's reverse up so those lines have actually look at that they've almost fully disappeared so they are still there i can still see them but the car's really struggling seeing them when they're not in the light so if i turn slightly here and point my headlights you can see there it's now picking up the line so it it solely kind of relies on light for this and as you can see as i start pointing my headlights into things all the lines start appearing now this is quite interesting it actually says that there are parking spaces all the way along here however directly to my left now as you'll see when i turn around there is not a parking space there and it's actually uh, it's curbed so let's see if as I point the car to this curb straight ahead of me there you go it's now started forming the curb which is obviously good but also it's pretty worrying that it didn't see that the first time when we reverse past it and if you were solely relying on this which of course it says you shouldn't uh, if you were solely relying on this you might have parked thinking that's a space but actually it's a raised curb just like that so again if we put it into forward uh, forward facing you can see here the car starts picking up the lines and it picks it up better because we are aiming the cameras at it but there we go we've gone straight past it there it's starting to pick it up from the back and the side cameras 
and yeah as you go past things and there's no light on them they kind of just disappear so let's see how well it does with these disabled spaces again the disabled spaces here uh, seem to be really rubbed out yeah it's struggling finding any of these lines the lines are worn out but obviously we can still see the lines and the car can that worked nicely though it told us exactly where the curb was which is good and here on the left are the disabled spaces which are really really marked out badly and the car is the car picking them up it's picking up some diagonals here it's picked up this so again there's a curb here but it's not a fully raised curb and you can see that it's picked that up there with some more diagonals as well let's reverse into one of these bays and see if when it turns on the reversing camera does it pick some more stuff up for the disabled spaces so you can see here it hasn't hasn't really picked up the disabled person on the floor and as we reverse into the spot there you go so it's warned us about the curb which is good it can obviously see the building behind us that is a sign there behind us so you can actually see it it's kind of drawn a, a real world sign which is quite cool but sadly it hasn't picked up the spaces beside us mm -hmm. and it hasn't picked up the fact that this is a uh, disabled space at all or at least it's not showing it much on the visualization so this was my kind of main concern with the visualization um it's it's pretty good but like i say it requires it requires a lot of light so in the areas where there is no light mainly to the right and to the left at the front of the cars it kind of struggles to pick up what is there what should be there oh and now we've gone a little bit too fast which has all brought it back out of um high fidelity mode so here for example it looks like this just ends here on the left and then there's a random lamppost but this does carry on all the way round but according to the car it'd be safe for me to turn left now and go into it there you go now it started to build it out and now it's put the lamppost in as well so a little bit hit and miss at night um as kind of expected to be totally honest in car parks and stuff especially when the lines aren't fully drawn um or kept you know nice and bright so yeah keep an eye out when you're using this at night for sure i hope you enjoyed the demonstration of 3d park assist i was pretty impressed by it but as i thought it definitely does have its limitations and the biggest limitation of all being light or darkness the lack of light let me know what you thought down below in the comment section this is some extra footage that i got just driving around the mcdonald's drive through and i'm going to leave it in to the end here but i wasn't commentating it i was just picking up my drive through and here it looks really impressive it picks up everything the cars the lines on the road